And as I said, this is not a technical class. So I'm not telling you how to use Wix or HTML or any other solution to actually literally build a portfolio. That I think is something you can figure out on your own. And there are plenty of wonderful tutorials on how to do those things. Instead, I'm going to tell you what I believe is important on game development portfolios in the different primary professions. Um, and I'm going to give you, we're actually going to build together a portfolio plan for every single one of you that gets you the steps you need to have an attractive looking portfolio as you start applying for jobs. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Un momento, por favor. Uh, where's my presentation? I think if I just share my entire screen, that'll work fine. Although I guess then I can't see your faces. Give me one second. I'm going to pull up my second monitor so that I can watch the chat as we go. Where's my HDMI cord? There it is. Okay. Just one second, then we'll get started. Everybody excited? Y'all excited for this? <laughs> Good, I'm glad. <laughs> this will be recorded. Uh, don't worry about it. We're going to drop this in the chat a little bit later. Um, drop this in the Discord, excuse me, work with any's Discord a little bit later. Okay, I've got my monitor set up. Let me put the actual presentation over there and start sharing. Is it up? Yes, it is. Okay. Which means if I share my buttons. Yes. Maha! Are y'all seeing? Yes, there we go. Are y'all seeing a presentation now? You got thumbs? Yes. Let us begin. <laughs> my audio is fine. Okay, good. All right. Welcome, y'all to the Indie Game Academy. I already gave you an introduction. We're an online school for game devs. Our big mission is to help people pave their own path. We do that with a uh, three primary um, workshops or boot camps that we run. One is a weekend long, one is a month long, and one is four month long. Um, and the three things that we do differently than most other people. Number one, we focus on multidisciplinary teamwork because spoiler alert, no matter who you are, you're gonna work with other people in games, unless you're like freaking notch or something, I guess. Uh, number two, we focus on project based learning because everybody like all recruiters want to see actual released games that is your first tip. I know that you love that cool project you worked on back in college recruiters don't care i'm sorry <laughs> it has to be a fully finished and released game that we can go and play somewhere. Number three, we focus on making our classes as fun as heck hopefully you're already having a good time. Our mission is to create a new golden age in the game industry where more indie developers can create their own income. I love goofy weirdo artists and I want to see all of you work for yourselves because um, yeah that's like my thing. All right, welcome to how to portfolio our lovingly entitled class. We have a couple different things that we're going to talk about. Number one, I'm going to give you an introduction to what we're actually doing here tonight and some background information, including what the hell happened to the game industry and why it is so shit right now. I'm not gonna, <laughs> not gonna hold any punches back. Number two, we're going to talk about our top tips for breaking into the game industry to give you some advice outside of the portfolio. Number three, we're going to talk about choosing your vertical or your profession. Basically, it is a, a, an established fact that niching yourself helps. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of help on niching yourself. Number four, we're going to look at some existing portfolios so that all of you feel strong um, and like you feel un like you understand what you actually need to put together. Um, yeah, awesome. Of course, Luke. Um, and number five, we're going to have you all build a portfolio plan. So you're not building a portfolio tonight. You are building the plan to get you that portfolio. The main deliverable for today is a plan for building out your portfolio in the next two months and the steps you're going to need to take to make it a really strong one with actual due dates and stuff. Uh, oh, that's a bit of a bummer. I'm just realizing that the Zoom recording. Oh, weird. <laughs> that's not what I want. Zoom recording is not able to see my shared screen. Can I fix this somehow? Eh? Nope. Okay, I'm gonna just have Zoom record the presentation. We won't see all of your beautiful faces, but it's okay. All right. Um, so who am I? Uh, I only put this slide up there basically so that you feel like you have some level of trust with me in case you don't know who I am. Um, I'm the headmaster of the Indie Game Academy, founded that about three years ago now. Basically, I'm a game uh, developer and designer who's been working in the space professionally for about 10 years, um, but I've been building games my entire life. Uh, I love to make the joke that back in the day I had this like ultimate life hack where I built board games instead of book reports in uh, elementary school. 
literally never had a single teacher turn me down for that. Amazing. If anyone's still doing that, <laughs> if anyone's still in school doing book reports, try it. Um, and eventually I realized that this is what I wanted to do professionally after I sort of half accidentally sold a game to addictinggames.com. Rest in peace, Flash, we miss you. Um, and that's what got me started realizing that this was an actual profession. So I've been, I've been working in games for a long time. Right now I work at Paradox Tectonic, who is a subsidiary of Paradox Interactive, the people who made uh, City Skylines and Stellaris and Crusader Kings and a number of other games. I've worked on quite a few titles. That bottom left there is that game I sold to Addicting Games. You can see it had some high fidelity graphics. It was just beautiful. <laughs> um, the bottom middle is the game I'm working on right now. I can't show you much more than that title screen at the current moment. Top left is a game I actually published with my own studio called Tailmore and some of my other work as well. All right, so I have three core agreements that I ask for every time I run a class here at the Indie Game Academy uh, or here at Work With Indies. We love you, Work With Indies. You're like our favorites. So let's try to abide by these three core agreements as much as possible. Number one, let's keep this space fun. We're learning how to make games. Let's have a fun time doing it. Number two, let's celebrate as much as possible. We tend to remember those things that have high emotional impact on us, which is why we can remember that embarrassing thing that happened 20 years ago. And probably a lot of you are thinking of an actual memory when I say that, but we can't quite remember what we had for dinner the other night. So we celebrate here at the Indie Game Academy. We pump it up. We freak out and act way too aggressive, uh, specifically because it actually helps us remember what we're learning. So actually, everybody, I can't see your faces, so this is all honor system, but I want you to raise the roof with me for a second because we're about to learn how to make portfolios. Did you do it? All of you are doing it, right? <laughs> Every one of you are doing it, right? Yes. Yes. I don't care if you're in public. Do it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Moving our body, acting it out, celebrating helps us to remember and just makes it more fun. And number three, let's be kind and patient with each other. If we're good to each other, we get goodness back. If we're jerks to each other, people are jerks back. It's like a pretty simple formula. So let's be kind to each other as much as possible. All right, let us begin with an introduction to why the game industry sucks right now, because it totally does. And I'm sorry to all of you <laughs> who are currently trying to break in or get your next job, because it really does. I wanted to basically like address the elephant in the room and talk for a moment about why it sucks right now. Um, so here, here is sort of where we're at, state of the union. Um, as far as the game industry goes, as of 2021, we were worth about $180 billion, which for reference is a lot. We're about half the age of uh, the movie industry, and we are already worth more than them. Just let that like sink in. We're already worth more than the film industry who's been established for far longer than we, uh, we have. Um, simply because games have such a further reach than film. Um, it is estimated to reach 256 billion by 2025, although I'm curious if that stat still stands after the past year and a bit. The top market segments are very much mobile because it has such reach. 48% of all game revenue is made on mobile devices. Console is behind that at 28 and PC is behind that at 23. For anyone who did the math and noticed that that's only 99% in total, the 1% is from arcade games. Poor arcade, you have fallen. Uh, and our year over year growth, basically meaning how much the game industry grew in 2020 was 23%. I have shown this slide in a lot of our classes, so you may have already seen it, but for reference, that is absurd growth. Um, eight or 9% industry growth per year is good. So 23% is crazy. Uh, but we paid the price for that and we are currently still paying the price for that right now. In 2021 and 2022, uh, the growth was only 1.4 and 2.1%. So why does hiring actually suck right now? Why did the growth drop off so suddenly and so aggressively? Um, the fact of the matter is it was the pandemic. Yes, I know we've been blaming everything on the pandemic for the past couple of years, but I, it's still screwing us over, I guess. You'll notice this is a chart of how much money is made in games in the US in particular. You'll notice that in 2020 there, it sure does shoot up a lot. Between uh, 2019 and up to 2020, this is a pretty significant growth, right? Versus previous years, not nearly as steep. But then as soon as we got to 2020, we started tapering off and now we're actually in a small decline. The reason that this happened is simply because everybody was stuck inside. We had a crazy boon massive growth in the game industry while everybody was stuck inside. Um, in order to keep up with that, game companies hired like crazy. So they had bigger teams than they had ever had before. And then 
Who could have guessed it? Everybody went back outside and suddenly expenses were way higher than they had ever been. And people were kind of gamed out. They stopped purchasing games nearly as much. So expenses were high, revenue was low, people started slashing and we're still seeing those layoffs today. And as a result of everybody slashing, most of them aren't trying to hire because it's a lot easier to just not hire than to fire people. So this ultimately, there's a lot more to it. This is a bit of a simplification, but this ultimately is why hiring sucks right now. So big question is, will it recover? Well, short answer is yes, but the actual question is when. Um, Justin Williams, who is one of our professors in IGA level three, um, and just a good dude and somebody I get to chat with now and then, he's a senior recruiter over at Blizzard. He says, I predict we'll be back to pre-pandemic hiring levels by the end of 2023. So like three months from now. Um, I think that's probably optimistic. I'm sorry, uh, but I, I would guess that we're going to be back to to a real like cadence of hiring, probably within a year, at worst within two years. So now you know why the game industry currently sucks, and you know that it will recover at worst in about two years, at best in about three months. We'll see. <laughs> maybe maybe Justin's right. Um, now let me give you some actual tips on breaking in, and let's talk about portfolios. So there are three easy tips we basically always recommend at IGA because we know them to be true. Um, we do an interview every single week with a game development professional on our podcast. So we are constantly talking to professionals, uh, adjusting our beliefs about what all of you should be doing um, and testing that with our students as well and actually seeing what tends to work and what doesn't work. So these three tips are sort of holy grail. They seem to always be agreed upon. Everybody goes, yes, these are all good. So here they are. Number one is to build your portfolio, AKA, build games. Um, those need to be released games. I'm sorry. I know all of you have like 10,000 games that you started working on and then didn't finish. I have those too. Those don't count. Sorry. <laughs> the only games that count are fully finished released titles. Um, that's a bit of an exaggeration because like a really cool tech demo or something like that can matter. But ultimately we have seen, uh, we, we have discovered that fully finished, released, playable from start to finish games matter a lot more than anything else. And there's a very simple reason for that. That's because recruiters and hiring managers now know you can actually do it. Now know you can go from start to finish and release a game and that you know what that process looks like. So build your portfolio, finish and release games. Number two is to network like crazy as much as possible. Uh, that is especially right now in the current climate, basically how you're gonna get your job. Cold applying essentially doesn't work. I'm so sorry, still do it. But for the most part, the way you're gonna get your job is through networking, knowing somebody who knows somebody. And number three is to apply aggressively. There are so many people applying right now. And so if you're gonna make it, you gotta go hard. Our recommended path for you to break in is as such. Um, as always, we encourage you to pave your own path, whatever feels right and whatever fits your schedule and your life better. Um, you can definitely adjust this path. Um, but number one, make sure you know your tech stack. Um, it's really easy to discover what that is. If, if somebody doesn't know what a tech stack is, um, that basically just means the technical tools that are going to be used to build the game. So for the most part, you're going to have a game engine, you're going to use Unity or Unreal, maybe something else, but probably Unity or Unreal. You're going to have some sort of source control, probably GitHub is the most common, but there's also uh, Perforce and a few other solutions. Um, and you're going to have some kind of ticketing or accountability software, probably Jira, maybe Trello. Um, and there are other tech tools that will work into that. If you're a 3D animator, probably you're going to be using Blender or something like that. If you are a what are some other good examples? If you're a level designer, you'll probably just do that in engine, I guess. Um, but there's gonna be other tools that work into your tech stack. Basically, what are the technical tools you need to actually make this game? So number one, what we're gonna, what you need to do is to look at existing job applications, job listings, ones that you want and that you're reasonably close to qualifying for. And then you're gonna look at the technical tools they mention, and then you're gonna study those tools. Who would have thought? So learn your tech stack. And while you do that, make a couple of practice projects to make sure you know what the hell is going on. So even if you are not an engineer, um, GitHub and source control, you're going to use period. So something I might recommend you do is on your next practice project, upload that sucker to Git and use Git as you work on it. Number two, I want you to work with a team on a couple of very small games. Um, I'm going to give you more thoughts on this in a bit, but uh, everybody wants to know you can work in a team. If you're getting hired, that means you're about to work on a team. Solo developer is like 
this whole like mythological, almost like unicorn of a, of a person. And they definitely exist and they definitely happen. There are Stardew Valleys in the world, but the vast majority of video games are highly collaborative. So make sure you're working on teams on small game projects. Once you're feeling confident with some 48 hour game jams or some similar very short game jams, then move on to some sort of middle form games, do a week or two weeks or three weeks, once again with a team and release that sucker. Every one of these games, release them. At the very least, put them up on itch.io or another web service, um, but ideally put them on the iOS, Android store, Steam, even a console if you can manage it, although that's super hard. You probably won't do that until you're working professionally. Um, and then work on some long form games. Uh, if you still are, um, if you still have the time and you still have not broken in yet, do like a three month or a four month or a six month game with some people that you now trust. Probably you've worked with a couple of them already um, and just insist on high quality. Make some freaking awesome games as you go. I will, there is time for Q and A at the end, um, but I will stop for questions as I notice them if they're uh, a good moment. Nice. That's great. Um, Gabby says, I've had success joining Discord specific to the industry and my role. Also turn on creator mode on LinkedIn and start posting about your expertise and interest. Huge one. Love that, Gabby. Those are good tips. Um, the LinkedIn creator thing, I just started doing about a, less than a year ago now. And I've really been cruising. A lot of people such as yourselves know who I am now. Um, a great way to start establishing yourself as an expert in the industry. Game Jam's super matter. Joining discords and other communities, super matter. That's how you network. Keep doing it. Uh, v Raptor says, what's a good way to learn new skills that isn't spending a bunch of money on specific certifications? <laughs> Great question. Um, mostly YouTube tutorials and other practice projects. So if you're trying to learn how to do AI, uh, conceive of a game that uses a lot of AI and then build that game. Um, I am a, a firm believer in finishing games, as I have now already illustrated. Um, so that means uh rather than like just studying how to do ai or something just freaking do it just make a game and include ai in there awesome linkedin is surprisingly big it is difference between oh creator mode is uh basically it like turns it from a networking site where you're just connecting with people it turns it into a more typical social media site so you have followers um at first i thought it was stupid now i actually kind of love it and linkedin is the only only social media i use <laughs> Nice. All right. I'm going to continue. Once you have those games, that means you're going to have three to five um, finished titles released on stores that you can then actually build your portfolio website with. So you notice the portfolio website is kind of later, which is part of why tonight you're going to build a plan as opposed to the actual portfolio. Then when you have that portfolio, it's looking nice. Then you start really going hard applying for jobs and networking like crazy. And you can network and apply before this during this process, of course. Um, but that's what we recommend. So like I said, tip number one is to make games. Your existing game library like really freaking matters. Recruiters can and will play your games. But the thing that kind of sucks is probably they actually won't. They just want to see that they are released finished titles. So make sure your games are playable and ideally release them to real storefronts. So iOS, Android, Steam, anywhere else that you can get them, freaking Oculus Store, wherever. Um, build games that you are proud of. So like a little cute project that you're like, eh, that was okay. It just don't put it on your portfolio. Release games that you're like, this is some of the best I can do. And then put that on a portfolio. And then think of them as showcases. So how can you show a recruiter that you'll do an amazing job at their company? A couple months ago, was it a couple months ago? I don't know, about half a year ago, I was up for an interview at Firaxis, <laughs> makers of civilization. Oh my God, I was so excited. I got turned down, damn. And the main reason they turned me down, uh, they were nice enough to actually give me some feedback was because I had not worked on enough strategy games. Makes sense. I tend to actually work in edutech, which I don't know, never expected, but that's where I am. Um, so if you want to work at Firaxis or some other game company, when you work on these practice projects, when you build some portfolio games, build games that fit that genre. So if you are looking to work at Call of Duty or something like that, if you want to work on some shooter games, build shooter games. If you want to work on strategy games, build strategy games. If you want to work on deck builders, build deck builders. Makes a lot of sense. It also helps you niche yourself. So if you build a couple deck builders, you might become a real expert in deck building. And probably you're gonna be low on the candidate pool if you're applying for a shooter game. But when you apply for a deck builder, suddenly you're at the top of the stack. 
All right, number two is to network like freaking crazy. <laughs> this is another stat that I say all the time. Up to 80% of open job positions are filled by somebody who is recommended by existing staff, AKA referral. <sighs> that is so frustrating. And I know it is because I got laid off about five or six months ago, but this is how it is. <laughs> um, 80% of open job positions are filled by referral. So what that ultimately means, I, uh, for those who don't know who Amir Satvat is, Amir Satvat is like an incredible resource. Look him up on LinkedIn and follow him right now. If somebody wants a little bonus pat on the back, post his profile to the chat for us so we can all go follow him. Um, Amir Satvat, yes, Bob knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, that's how you spell it. Somebody go get his link for us. Um, Amir uh, posts a lot of really wonderful stuff, including a giant list of job uh, of open job positions that you can apply for. Really wonderful dude. Strongly recommend you follow him. He did some research semi recently where he talked about the odds of getting a cold application, meaning applying for a job where you don't know anybody. The odds of getting that job are less than a tenth of a percent less than a tenth of a percent, less than one in 1,000. That sucks, <laughs> but it is how it is. Um, so all of the things that I'm telling you tonight, I, I tend to be an incredibly optimistic person, but as a result of how the game industry is at this current time, I've decided that I have to be fairly honest with all of you. Um, don't let this be something that crushes you. Instead, let this be something that strengthens you. Well, shit, only one in a 1,000 get picked without a referral. I'm gonna go get some damn referrals. So this is why referrals are so important. And there's a lot of different ways that you can approach getting a referral. Um, I'm gonna show you a quick way right now that I didn't realize was like a uh, novel until somebody pointed out that they had never heard of this before. So here's your quick tutorial on how to use LinkedIn to get referrals. Let's say we're looking at work with Indies because we freaking love work with Indies and we find some cool job. Let's look at the design. You know, we're scrolling down the list. Uh, what's, a, what's a good one we want to look at? Maybe Soup Master. We decide we want Soup Master. We, we want to work at Soup Master Games. Okay. We copy the name of the studio. Then we head on over to LinkedIn. Then we search for the name of the company Soup Master Games. All right. Now, instead of, oh, this one might be too small to do this with because their company isn't even popping up. Let's try a different one. Uh, I don't know how popular any of these are necessarily. Let's do Green Sky, I think is a little bit bigger, right? What's a, how about this? What's a company that one of you wanna, wants to work at? A company you're like really hungry to work at. Green Sky is good. All right, we'll use Green Sky. So we click on the, the actual job, we get the name. We come to LinkedIn. And by the way, Soup Master, um, especially with Indies, uh, there will be times when the company is too small to find a referral for. Um, and that's a bit sad, but that's just how it's going to be. It looks like this is an example of that. So in this case, it would be harder for me to find a referral. I probably still could. Um, but let's do Green Sky. They're a little bit bigger. Great. So here's the company. I'm actually not going to click on that. Instead, I'm going to search for it. And then I'm gonna click on people instead of companies. And I'm gonna click on connections first and second, and then I'm gonna show results. What this is gonna do is it's going to tell me people who I either am connected with, which honestly happens pretty infrequently, usually doesn't happen. Usually I'm gonna get a bunch of second connections. And what that means is I know somebody who knows this person. And you'll see that a lot of these people currently work at Green Sky. I'm going to go down this list and I'm going to target a couple of people who I think would enjoy talking to me. So probably I'm not going to reach out to the animator because I'm a game designer and I'm applying to a game design position. Probably I'm not going to reach out to the founder because they're the founder and they've got a bunch of crap going on. Instead, I'm going to find some people who, who just like look like we would chat and have a good time, um, especially if their jobs sort of match what I'm doing. So this dude seems kind of cool. Let's click into Yuhana. Anytime we click into one of these people, LinkedIn will always list our mutual connections. So these three people are connected with Johanna. 
And here's what I will now do. Now, in this case, I may actually keep looking because these three people I don't know super well. Austin Funk, though, I have had a couple of conversations with. So what I'm going to do is message Austin instead of Johanna. Wait, how the hell? <laughs> Maybe I did this before a while ago. I don't remember it. That is so funny. Um, and I'm going to message something exactly like this. I planned it like this. This wasn't a happy accident. Um, I'm going to message. <laughs> yeah, AI taking over. I'm going to message Austin asking for an introduction to this person who works at the company. So here's Johanna. I'm going to say, hey, Austin, hope you're doing well. I noticed you're connected with Johanna and would love to be introduced. Um, I would add to this. Um, I am currently applying for a role at Green Sky. And then I'm going to send that message. My sort of uh, general rule is that I will do this with three people at every job description, at every job listing that I really want. So if I really want this Green Sky, I'm going to message Austin, yes. And I'm going to delete this so I don't accidentally send it. Uh, and then I'm going to message a couple of other people who also work there. I did this for my last job. I've done this for every job I've ever gotten. Um, but I got incredibly lucky at my last job, at the current job I work at now. This is Rod Humble. He is the GM at uh, Paradox Tectonic. Um, and I did this exact process. I applied for a contract job there. Um, and then I went into this mutual connections. And I went down the list. At, at that time, it was much shorter because all these people are coworkers now. But I went down that list, and Don Bellinger is on that list. He's a good friend of mine. Um, and then, more importantly, this dude, Victor Blanc, who's actually our art uh, professor at the Indie Game Academy, and now, as a result, a good friend of mine, were on this list. So was Lex Chesler, who's an old coworker of mine. I messaged those three people with basically the exact same message that you just saw. And I got extremely lucky in that all three of them reached out to Rod on my behalf and said, hey, this guy's awesome. When I got into that first interview with Rod, he went, hey, Victor says hi, I love that guy. So that's what you're aiming for. And that's one of the ways you can really easily use uh, LinkedIn to continue networking. You can do this from anywhere in the world. Um, and you can, a part of this process that you have to understand is that you should be building this LinkedIn community as fast as you can. This will be recorded and it will be uploaded. I will drop it in the general chat uh, when it's up and uh, around. All right, so that's your little intro to networking. Step number three is to apply aggressively. Now, this one I've had people disagree with me on. So I'm gonna give you some perspective that is not mine immediately after this. Um, but I have a couple of thoughts. Number one, don't wait until you're the perfect candidate. And the reason that I have this is because I run into so many juniors who are like, yeah, but I don't have the 17 and a half years that they list that I need for a junior position. Guess what? All those numbers are made up. Just apply. <laughs> um, you're probably going to get rejected, but you just never know. Uh, sometimes you're going to get picked up and regardless, here's the important part, you're going to one, start to understand what it takes to get these positions. So you're going to get some advice now and then. Most of the time recruiters will just say no and they won't tell you why and that kind of sucks, but every once in a while somebody will say X, Y, and Z is why we couldn't hire you. And regardless, when you get that rejection, I want you to say thank you, please keep me in mind for future positions. Do you have any thoughts on how I could improve? That's how you respond to every single rejection. Then you might learn what you can do better. And more importantly, you've put yourself in their mind. And I want you to record all of those recruiters who reach back out to you. I want you to write them all down, put them in a list, and reach back out to them once a month and say, hey, do you have any open positions? All right. So apply. Don't wait. Um, apply frequently and consistently. If you can find the positions, you should be applying for 10 to 20 jobs a week. We did a little research in our community, and I don't mean to make this darker and sadder than it already is, but we discovered that it takes about over 50 <laughs> applications to get one interview for a junior level talent right now in the game industry. So if you aren't applying to 10 to 20 a week, well, even at 10 to 20 a week, that means you're gonna get one interview per month. So if you aren't applying to 10 to 20 a, a week, that means you're gonna get one interview every like three months. So make sure you're keeping those numbers high as much as you can. Um, and also cast a wide net. This means that you should be applying for non-game industry jobs. I know that sucks, <laughs> but especially if you can find a job with applicable experience that you don't hate might be the perfect way to ride out this period where we're kind of recovering from the pandemic crash. Um, it's also not unheard of for a recruiter that likes you to pass you on to a different role. This happened to me in my first job interview. 
I applied for a job at Lumosity. That was my first game industry job. They considered me first for the web development team, and I failed that interview. Uh, I got rejected. But the recruiter and I had had an awesome conversation. She really liked me. And so she passed me on to the mobile department, and I wound up actually passing that interview. Um, that is a lucky story that is not going to happen to all of you, but it could. Um, and regardless, um, you should act like it could. You know, you never know. So cast a wide net, apply for jobs that aren't quite right, maybe do engineering. I was an engineer long before I was a game designer. Engineering is a little bit easier to break into than game design as long as you can code. Um, and it's not unheard of, as I said, for recruiters to pass you around. Now, an alternate perspective on this is actually, who was it earlier? Uh, somebody mentioned something similar to this earlier in the chat. Mm, I can't easily find it, so I'm just going to talk about it. What I just told you is sort of the shotgun approach to applying. Apply to as much as possible. There are people who think that that's fundamentally wrong, largely because you're only going to get one in a thousand to actually interview you. Um, but the second part of this is that as a result of trying to crank out a ton of applications, you're one going to use a lot of time, you're going to get a lot of rejections, which can be emotionally difficult, um, and uh, you're just not spending a lot of time on each application. So to give you an alternate perspective that you can consider and try out for yourself, um, I have been, I've heard from other people that you should instead apply for a very small handful of jobs, and you should put a ton of time into basically networking for that particular job. So if there's an open job at a company that you really like, join their Discord, start chatting with people, give your feedback on the game, respond to the developers, and try to sort of wheedle your way into that particular company. And you can start doing that even if there isn't a job posting there, because you never know if you start to actually build a relationship with those people at that company. Um, you never know when they're going to post something and when they might think of you. So an alternate perspective for you to consider, perhaps do a little bit of both, um, is to spend a lot of time sort of schmoozing one or two companies that you really want to work for and think you have good odds of working at. Um, just one thing to say about that, you are way, uh, you are less likely to get hired at the really big names. So if you really are hungry to work at Blizzard or, um, I don't know, Larian, um, there's just not that many jobs at those companies and everybody wants to work there. So the applications are very strict uh, and it's very hard to break in. So if you are going to go spend some hours schmoozing a couple of companies, I would lower your expectations and go for some more sort of middling level companies that you know will have jobs, um, but aren't going to have everybody and their mother apply for them. All right, so those are our top three tips. Um, uh, what did I say? Make the portfolio, build games, network like crazy, apply aggressively. For every single job, I want you to write a cover letter. And then, of course, have your resume and portfolio ready to go. Okay, let's talk about choosing your vertical, aka your area of expertise. Sorry, game developers, but you got to niche yourself. Ah, dang it. You have to choose one freaking thing to be really good at. I hate this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate it. I am bigger than the game industry tells me I am. I am good at many things and enjoy doing many things. And I know that so many of you in this room feel exactly the same way. Uh, sorry, but we have heard over and over and over again that niching yourself down to the smallest niche you can makes you more likely to get a job. Think about it this way. If you are a 2D level designer that specializes in narrative adventure games or something, um, think of how perfect you're going to be for that two or three jobs that need that versus if you're just a game designer, how you're going to be kind of meh compared to the person who is a 2D level designer for narrative adventure games. Um, I want to say something here, which is that remember that this niche doesn't have to be final. It can be kind of painful to cut off all these other things that you really enjoy doing and just focus on this one niche. I get that. I have felt that pain myself. But remember that you can change over time. I started as an engineer before I was a game designer, right? It's, it's okay. But we have heard from many people and seen from our own research that niching yourself helps you get the job. So you should not be just an engineer. You should instead be an AI engineer or something similar. So these are the nine verticals. We're about to do our first exercise of the night. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to get you all to pick uh, basically your niche. Um, these nine verticals, and by the way, vertical is a term we use, but like nobody else uses it. We just think it's cool, I guess. 
The nine game professions, essentially, um, that cover the vast majority of game development jobs are art and animation, audio, business and ops, design, marketing and community, product, programming, QA and CS, writing a narrative. So these are your highest level. Um, write for me in the chat which of these nine you are. And actually, I think you can raise your hands, right? Raise your hand if you do not know which of these nine you are. Raise your hand for me if you do not know. Uh, oh, <laughs> not the ask to speak button, although I get why there's confusion. Uh, isn't there a way to make like an emoji? Okay, it looks like most people know where they wanna work, which is good. Um, the only reason I asked if you don't know is because if you don't know, there's no way you're gonna make a portfolio. So your first step is to figure out which one you are. And that's totally okay if that's where you're at right now. But make sure you figure out which of these ones you actually are. Now, there is a really good resource I'll share with you right now, uh, if I can get it. Uh, this is Hitmarker. Most of you probably know them. They're another great, uh, another great group on LinkedIn to follow. That link will bring you to this complete list of gaming jobs that they, uh, this is sort of one of the things that really made them go viral at first. You'll notice that each one of these professions or verticals gets broken down into a bunch of specializations. So I'm a game designer. There's under game design, a bunch of categories, including combat design, economy design, interaction design, level design, monetization design, those people are crazy, multiplayer design, narrative design, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I myself tend to be one of two things. I'm either a systems designer or I am a, uh, a content designer. Um, which they actually don't even list here, which means basically I'm building stuff for a larger system, little fun moments for the player to experience. Um, so that is your specialization. You fall into one of those nine categories for the most part, but then you're going to have a specialization underneath that. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more in just a second. And you can go even further when you think of specialization. So you might be a systems designer, but you could go further than that. You could be a systems designer that specializes in, uh, let's say, what's a good one, fighting game uh, damages or something like that. Um, I personally am a game designer, um, which is a broad category, and I wouldn't recommend any of you do that, um, but I'm a little further in my career, so I get a little bit more sort of freedom. I'm a game designer that specializes in, my niche is edutech and games adjacent projects, especially for sort of more wholesome games. I tend to work on stuff that teaches people something. Um, so that way, I'm the top of the tech, tech stack for people who are looking for that. My last job that shut down, that was when I got laid off, um, was at Imview, IMVU. They had an internal startup called uh, With Me that was all about helping young women and those who identify as women become friends online and create trust between each other. So that was a job that I was the perfect fucking candidate for. I work for non-typical player bases, and unfortunately, women are a non-typical player base, which is ridiculous. Um, and I tend to work in sort of edutech and games adjacent, where it's not quite just a video game. So I was the perfect person for that job. That's how I got hired, even with less experience than I probably should have had for that. So that is what I would call your niche. I would like each of you to decide on three things. Um, first of all, I want you to start a text document. This is going to be your portfolio plan. If you want, you can just write it down on a piece of paper, or you can open up a Google Doc and write it in there, or you can open up uh, Microsoft Word or whatever and write it in there, or freaking Photoshop, I don't care. Find yourself somewhere that you can create a portfolio plan. I'm gonna give you like 10 seconds to do this. Go get a piece of paper or open up a text document. Write me out because for the rest of this talk, you're gonna be adding stuff to this document to help you build a freaking awesome portfolio. Notes open, good. Notepad, save us, yes. Notepad, huh. save us from this darkness. Indeed, <laughs> I don't know what that was exactly. InView babes, rise up, yes, I love that. I kind of miss it, it was such a beautiful concept, you know, but no, they shut it down as with freaking everything in the past year. All right, so now that you have your piece of paper, this is your portfolio plan. Go ahead and write that at the top of the doc. Portfolio plan. Maybe make it a cute version of that title for yourself. Magical portfolio plan. Portfolio action plan. I don't know. Write it down. All right, now that you've written it down, I want you to write down three things. 
Number one, I want you to write down your profession. That is your highest level thing. Uh, so that is either, that is generally one of these nine. There may be something different. So either you're gonna be an engineer, a designer, a composer, a producer. Um, if nothing else, I shared that link to Hitmarker. You can go check that out. Um, grab yourself a profession. So that's your high level. You're gonna be an engineer, a designer, a composer, an animator, whatever. Then write down your specialization within that profession. So if you're a game designer, perhaps you're a combat designer or a boss designer. Boss designers are a thing. I kind of am envious. That sounds so cool. Uh, or perhaps you are a 2D artist or perhaps you are a texture artist. Um, and the more specialized this in this is, in general, this is not quite true, but in general, the easier time you're gonna have breaking in. Of course, there has to be actual jobs for that specialization, um, but absolutely you can find uh, you're going to be once again top of that stack when you do find those jobs who need it. Um, Quaza asks for some specializations within narrative. That's a great question. I actually don't agree with um, with Hitmarker here. The fact that they placed narrative under game design, um, I guess it, it it is, but I feel that writing and narrative are truly their own separate category because game designers are, are basically trying to figure out how to make the game fun. Narrative designers are trying to figure out how to tell a compelling story. And those are two pretty different things, even though they marry a lot of the time. Um, so specializations within narrative, uh, I would say they could be um, either a genre or type of game. So maybe you are a, uh, actually, I know somebody who's a romance uh, game narrative designer. Um, it could be a sort of theme or feel. So you're like a horror narrative designer. Um, and it could be some actual professions. So there are writers. There are um, dialogue writers. There are world writers. There's a couple of different ones out there. Um, and this is something that you can pretty easily Google as well. Don't be afraid to do your own research. All right, once you have your specialization, I want you to write down your unique niche. So this is one where it could be basically anything. Um, probably the most common one would be just a genre. So I am an AI engineer that specializes in deck building games. Um, that's probably going to be the most common, but it may also be sort of thematic. I am a uh, boss designer that specializes in hardcore, uh, like dangerous, uh, Dark Souls like games or something like that. Um, or it could be basically anything else, as long as you feel like you will actually be able to find jobs in that niche. So, for instance, like I said, my specialization or my niche is edutech. I tend to work on things that teach people something, and I'm very good at doing that. Um, but it could be like wholesome games or something like that. So that's your first three things to write down your portfolio plan. And the reason that I want you to write these down is because when you build your portfolio, I want you to be very clear about what you are. Um, portfolios that just say, I'm a game designer and developer are so much weaker than I am a boss designer that specializes in Souls-like games. Like that makes it so clear who you are and why you're going to be primo shit for the people trying to hire for that position. So write in the chat for me, your profession, your specialization, and your niche. And these can change. This is just your best guess for now. Right now in the chat, write down your profession, specialization, and niche. I see much of you writing it down as well. Engineer, backend, live service, content, middleware. Nice, Chase. Well done. A plus. Amazing. Gameplay mechanic designer specializing in cozy puzzle adventure games. Ooh, that's kind of my shit. I love that. Profession QA and CS specializing in AI for real time strategy games. Awesome. Well done. Game design specializing in narrative design specializing in role playing games. Awesome. That one you could probably get more specific because role playing games are pretty broad. Um, that is one I, I will have to look up more um, specializations for narrative because I didn't give you a, a bunch of good examples, but there are definitely specializations in narrative. There are people who just write dialogue. There's people who just write world building documents. There's people who just write content. There's people who are just doing the designing and not doing the writing. Somebody in specializing in JRPGs, great. Okay, so that is your first exercise. This is the beginning of your portfolio doc. So we're gonna spend, how much longer do we have? We're gonna spend the next 15 minutes, we'll say, reviewing some existing portfolios. As we review these portfolios, especially the ones that have to do with your profession, um, I want you to write down some of the key things that you learned from that portfolio. 
So if I show you a really cool engineering portfolio and you're like, whoa, that's awesome, write it down because now that you have this portfolio plan, you can follow the plan and you can take those pieces of inspiration, those bullet points and add them to your portfolio. All right, so let's start. Um, I'm seeing a ton, I'm actually seeing a good spread here, which is great. I'm gonna pull up just a couple of examples from a couple of different areas so that we get good examples of different verticals. The first one I'm gonna show you is a developer, AKA an engineer. Um, this is a senior, so take that with a grain of salt because of course they're gonna have worked on more stuff than you have. Um, but this is a pretty damn strong example of a engineer. Um, I wanna call out, uh, as I go through each portfolio, please feel free to ask questions in the chat. There's a lot of you in this meeting, so I might miss your question. I'm gonna do my best to answer questions as we go. Um, but also point out anything that you really like. If you see something on this that you're like, that is something that we need to learn from, write it in the chat and I'll try to call those out. All right, so there's a couple things I like about this particular engineering portfolio. Number one, I love this concept, a section called what I offer, <laughs> um, making it very clear, here's the things I do well. I actually feel like this person could have gone more in depth because it doesn't say a lot for you to say that I know Unity and I know Unreal. It says something and the recruiter is gonna be looking for somebody who knows one of those two, so that's good. Um, but I would also uh, include probably a little bit more, some skills in particular that you're good at. The other thing I wanna point out, this person has specializations. This is what I'm talking about. As you build your portfolio, make it very clear what you actually specialize in and what is unique about you. So this person is an engineer, but they specialize in programming actual gameplay, user interface, which that's a whole, whole damn thing, and multiplayer networking, which I bet that alone gets this person a good number of jobs. Because boy, multiplayer is a pain in the ass to program. Next, and this is what I actually usually recommend is first, this person has their published titles. Your titles, matter so much. If you take nothing away from this talk, your titles matter so much. <laughs> Practice projects, things like that. Great, good, you know, not bad. I'm happy you have those practice projects, but ultimately what people care about is your released, finished titles, your shipped games. And ideally, and this isn't gonna be true for all of you because you're just getting started. Ideally, these should be well-known, well-respected, well-received games. So on this list, many of these are games that we don't know about, but he does have Elder Scrolls Blades, which is a decently well-known game. Um, and regardless, what he's got here is a couple different things. Uh, number one, he has a GIF of the game, a video, and then he has a link to the GitHub. I am not exactly sure how I feel about this, as opposed to what I would normally do, link straight to the playable game. So right to the game, the store page. Um, but it's a decent thing to do, I think, for an engineer in particular. Uh, next, he has some stats, which I think are is always good. Um, I am a fan, I'm gonna show you a different portfolio that I really like in a second. I'm a fan of having the stats per game, actually. So I would include here, like, you know, uh, designed 15 levels or something like that right next to Elder Scrolls Blades. Um, but I think this is pretty cool. I don't, I don't mind it. Although like, what does that mean exactly? What does it mean for you to master tech? I don't know. <laughs> um, he also has uh, some of his like different roles he fills. I actually don't like this because it makes him feel like more of a generalized person. Um, and he has a tiny little about me at the bottom, which I feel like he could feature more. So there you go. Game jams that end up in Steam considered shipped. Yes, when I say shipped, that means on a store. And that's all I mean. iOS, Android, Steam, Oculus, any store is good. Itch even is good, it's just less good. So itch is gonna be your sort of Eldos. Itch is your, your bottom line. If you can't release it anywhere else, put it up on itch and that'll still mean more than an unfinished game. Just make sure it's like good, you know, and playable from start to finish. So yes, itch counts, it just counts less. All right, now I'm gonna show you one of my favorites. This is Surya. He's a member of our community and it's a portfolio that I have shared like lots of times. So you may have seen it before, but there's a lot about Surya's portfolio that I like and that's why I bring it up so much. First thing I will point out that I don't like is the fact that he's a game designer and a developer. Sure sounds like his dude's generalizing, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but I like that he is 
Uh, first of all, showing off himself. I am an advocate for including a personal bio section, but I'm an advocate for keeping it very brief and just giving them a little taste of your personality because that matters more than you might think. That interview job that I got, they actually mentioned to me in the interview uh, a thing that I wrote about Warhammer 40K, which is like one of my favorite pastime games. Oh, thank you for sharing these portfolios. I should be sharing them. My bad, my bad. There you go. That's very smart of you. Thank you, sir. There you go. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so yes, a little bit of personal information, but uh, make sure that your first title is above the fold. If you haven't heard that term before, that means I should be able to see the first title without having to scroll down. So other stuff that I really like about Sirius Portfolio, it is number one, first and foremost, the most important thing on the page is the titles, the finished games. And for every one of those finished games, he has a nice little dedicated area. He's got some GIFs and videos. So even if I don't click through to play, I can see what it is. I know what the gameplay is like. I know what he worked on. I love that he has validity metrics. He's got reasons why this game looks attractive. And I also love that he talks about what he actually did on the game, and I feel like he could actually do more of this. Um, for those who have written their resumes, which you also need, make sure you put that together. You know, you've already gotten good at making bullet points that kind of talk about how you contributed to the to the game or the company that you're working for. That's what you should have here. Um, so you should have like designed 12 levels or um, any metrics that you improved are awesome. When I was at Imbu, I increased the unique days played. So basically the, the, the amount of days that people come back on by about 70% by creating a leveling system for one of their pre-existing games. That's the kind of shit that recruiters are gonna be like, oh yeah, this guy knows what he's doing. Even if they don't know what that stat means. So include metrics as you can, don't lie about them, but definitely talk yourself up a little bit. Um, I also love that every one of these games is playable and he keeps it nice and short and sweet. And then if people want to, there is a read more section. Oh, which he doesn't even fill out, which is probably fine because honestly, recruiters are not going to click this button. Um, I mean, you should you should probably just remove that button if you're not going to have actual more. Uh, and that's those are some of the things I think you can learn from this page. I love this as an example. I also kind of like how now that he has these professional projects, he has a game jam section. I kind of like that. Um, for those just getting started, any of your game jam games, as long as they are released, you can totally just count as its own project you can put up here. Um, I kind of like that he talks about freelance work, but I think probably that hurts him more than it helps him. I do like that he talks about publications. Uh, this is a great way to establish yourself as an expert. He actually came on our podcast one time. He's been on a couple of other places, and I definitely like that he talks more about him. Um, I would include a more about me, a bigger section where you really write about yourself towards the bottom. Uh, but I would include that little tiny a headshot for sure, a, a picture of your face, and a little bit about yourself up at the top. I also do like his skills, though on, honestly, the main thing they're going to look for is to make sure that the do, job description and any specific tech skills they mention in there are on your portfolio. So probably don't need all this crap. And you can just write like four years of experience in Unity, five years of experience with Blender, six years of experience with whatever. We'll be looking at any of our portfolios. We totally can, Luke, um, especially at the end. I wanted to make sure we have a lot of examples before we go. All right, so we've looked at a uh, engineering portfolio and a design portfolio. I would call this a design portfolio more than anything else. Let's take a look at where are some of the other ones I grabbed for you. So here's an uh, audio designer, a composer. Um, this one is okay. Uh, I think they've done a good job of uh, including like, I don't know if y'all are hearing that, but I am, and it's too loud. Um, I think they've done a good job of including actual gameplay and a really easy way for you to actually start listening to their work. Here, why don't we check out this one? Oh, that's the, the link I just did. <laughs> if you guys have portfolios you want me to look at, you want us to look at, you can definitely share yours down there. So here, sure, I'll open this one up. All right, uh, let me finish any thoughts on the audio one. For anyone who is a composer or sound designer, this is your example. Um, I think this one could use work, honestly. Um, the I am a big fan of a single scrollable page as much as possible, and too much of this is hidden on other pages. A recruiter is not going to click into other pages, unfortunately. Um, they've got like 30 seconds to look at your portfolio. So they want to be able to just scroll down and look at it and see that you've got what they need. 
Um, this guy did an okay job. They're also not going to read big block pieces of text for the most part. Occasionally they will. Um, but yeah, the stuff that I like is that they are uh, showcasing what you can listen to immediately. They're showing the work and they're showing the games. All right, let's look at swag shaws. What do we, I'm not gonna say anything. First, I want some people to give some thoughts on this in the chat. What do you think of swag shaw? What do you, well, let's start with what you like. What do you like about swag shaw's portfolio? Lots of titles. Yes, for sure. I think this is actually a um, great example. Interestingly, it looks like these are not all titles. Is Swagshaw director, producer, team founder, moderator, host, judge? Okay, first thing that I don't like about your portfolio, Swagshaw, I don't know what the hell you do. <laughs> I'm assuming you're trying to be a producer or a project manager. Um, but it should definitely be like look at Surya's even though Surya's did not actually here's a great example Nathan Kelman who we often actually bring in he works at Lost Boys Interactive he worked on Diablo 4 as well as Call of Duty and a couple other games um, we bring him in a lot and this is his portfolio and he immediately I'm like oh he's a level designer cool um, and he does have more information about him that shows his specialization a little bit more although honestly I think you could work on that so Swagshaw where is it here it is uh, immediately, I think you could be more clear about who you actually are. Um, I think this actually looks great. I would feature this more and then have these kind of be their own section or do what Surya did up here. Um, I have too many links now. I'm losing everybody. Here it is. Um, do what Surya did where he has like a really dedicated area for that game. Do that for a couple of your favorites, your top three to five games, and then include all of these after that as their own little links at, at this size. That's one of the big things I can say to all of you. You should actually only post your top three to five games. Um, and that's because, uh, think of it as a game designer, actually. You don't wanna design 15 paths for the player to go down if 10 of them kind of suck. Like, why would you even bother designing 10 crappy paths? So ultimately you should only show the recruiter those like top spicy titles that you know they're gonna love. And then I would hide the other titles somewhere else. Not necessarily like hide them, but just make it so that yes, you can go and find them, but it's not on that first page. All right. So let's, uh, I wanna make sure everybody, is there a specific kind of portfolio? So uh, in particular, one of those nine professions um, that anybody wants to see? somebody feeling like they really want to see an animator okay great yeah let's do a game animator portfolio and by the way some of these examples that i'm showing you are ones that i already knew about or already had as examples but some of these are ones i'm just googling and here's somebody who worked at ea that looks like a great example <laughs> oh no this is a company never mind that's not a good example let's find a real person Programmer and artist animator portfolio, art portfolio of Game Ace. Is this a real person? No, it's a studio again. If anybody has a 3D animator portfolio, please send it to me. Um, but this is how I found the other ones. You can absolutely find these just by searching around. Portfolio example. Here we go. We found one. All right. So this is Matthias Takas. T -t 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 I'm not exactly sure how to say that. Please forgive me. Um, so a couple things I like. Uh, immediately, it's very visual and it's attractive. I do think he could have a personal little bio section at the top. I do think he could include contact info. That's another big one. Make sure people can easily get to you. I like how he has a resume. That's actually something I didn't realize I needed. Um, include your resume in a downloadable form at the top of your page somewhere. Um, and he has a store. What can you buy? Interesting. <laughs> That's a new one. Uh, and I do like how his titles here are uh, labeled. If I click into any of them, mm, I'm not loving this. All he's giving me is a single screenshot that is not nearly enough for me to be confident in his abilities. In fact, this doesn't really even, is this different if I click into animation? Okay, so what am I looking at here? 
So this is not entirely clear to me. Think about this from like a UX perspective, user experience perspective. I didn't even know I had to click onto animation at first because I assumed I was in there already. But here's some actual animation it looks like. Nice, good, yeah. So this is a little bit more like I would expect. I'm actually seeing examples of animation that he has done, preferably in game. Um, but this is not bad uh, example of what you actually animated and showcased. I would make, like think of it like a sizzle reel. I would showcase what you actually did um, and then showcase the game that it was featured in. Yeah, orient definitely. Good point, Kevin. Orient your portfolio towards yourself, not your studio. Make it about what you worked and what you achieved. 100%. This is a sales page where you are selling yourself. Avoid confusion. The recruiter doesn't care about your studio. They want your skills. They want to know who you are and why you're going to kick ass on their team. On their team. What are you going to contribute to their game? Why is their game going to be better because they hired you? Yeah, and marketing your studio definitely sends the wrong message. Just to have it, give that its own website. Doesn't need to be on your portfolio. Your portfolio and your game website, your your studio website, are two very different things. All right. Uh, any other types of portfolios we want to look at before continuing? Let's see. Oh, this is a narrative design portfolio. Um, this is Brendan Gibbons, who seems to have some experience. This is one of the ones that I googled, but I looked around at him and he seems all right. I like. I kind of like. I feel like he could use a headshot up here along with his uh, intro. And I kind of like how he has different links. Once again, the thing is recruiters probably aren't gonna click these links. They just wanna scroll down, know that you've got what it takes and then move on to the next candidate. Um, so, oh, that's interesting. It just links to the same page. Mm, I don't know, I'm medium on that. I do like how he is uh, splitting these up though. It's not a bad idea. Um, and then like, I think the only way this would make sense is if it's for different kinds of games or something like that. Like virtual reality makes sense to me because the recruiter might be for a virtual reality company. Um, but like commercial games doesn't make sense to me because freaking all these games should be commercial. Um, but I like that he has uh, the games themselves with some information. Um, by the way, talk up the games as well as talking up yourself. You saw in Surya's portfolio um, that he talked about uh, some of the some of the stats that show that the game is awesome. Definitely do that. On my own portfolio, I worked for Lumosic. That was my first uh, game company. And so I often talk about how they have 200 million users because that makes me sound smart, even though it's kind of, uh, kind of luck that I got to work somewhere like that. Um, let's see what happens when we learn more. Eh, this is okay. I want more pictures. I want more GIFs. Um, I think for a narrative designer, it makes sense to have a lot of text. But I think where it really, where you're really going to want a lot of text is if it's a writing sample in particular. Um, so if you are like, here is some of the dialogue I wrote. Should we have a picture of ourselves? I think so. Yes. Some people disagree with me on that, um, but I I think fundamentally you should. I, I like how Siri did it here, where it's a really brief little section. It's not taking up too much space, but they get to meet you and know you. There are so many different types of recruiters out there. One of them is going to hire you because of the school you went to, and another one isn't going to care which school isn't going to care which school you went to. Um, so as a result, I am an advocate for keeping your face up there because it will matter to some people. I would include your face, yes, and make sure your picture is professional, yes. <laughs> Good point, Kevin. All right, so I think that's as many portfolios as we're going to look at for right now. Um, oh shit, I meant to show this one. Uh, this is uh, Shane Breedveld who's a producer. So for anyone who wants to work as a producer, a project manager, um, any other sort of the businessy or management type roles, this is a great example. Um, I love, I actually really love this at the top. This is probably longer than it actually should be. Um, but I love that he is so open about who he is and what he's done. And then also talks about skills that the different, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> Uh, Captured Raptor. Um, I love that he's talking about the specific skills that he has because if you don't already know, there will be robots that trawl your portfolio to find these words. Um, so if it doesn't find the word scrum, you know, it might throw you out. So look for those skills that get frequently mentioned on different job postings and then put them on your portfolio. Um, I love that he did something similar to Surya where he's moving down each project. He's talking about what the game is and some of why it's strong. He's including a link to watch videos of it so the recruiter can know exactly what it is really quickly. Um, oh, this is interesting. 
<laughs> Funnily enough, uh, Alien Removal Division is actually, I'm pretty sure Nathan worked on that, or one of his friends did maybe. Uh, anyway, that was a portfolio project. I think of one of Nathan's friends. Funny how, how small our industry can be sometimes. Um, I love this. This is what I wanted to show you. This is what I think it was Kevin was talking about. This is a pitch. You are pitching yourself to the recruiter. So you should be including exactly what happened and exactly what you did to make that project and game rock. The one thing that I think is a little bit weak about this is we don't have links to play. That's the only thing I think he could add. And he could probably shorten this a bit. This is a bit long for each section. Um, but yes, this is awesome. It's a freaking fantastic portfolio. Here's the link. There you go. All righty. So let's move on in the presentation to get all of you planning out your portfolios. Oh, wait, didn't we already do this? Oh. Oh, it's just I use the same pictures. My bad. All right. So actually building our portfolio, there's a couple things that I want us to talk about. Number one, um, leave for me in the chat how many published, so it needs to be on a game store, write for me in the chat how many published games you have released. Published, uh, all I'm saying is released to a store. That's what I mean by that term. Five, three, zero, zero, zero. Yeah. I assumed a good number of people would be zero. Point five. Very curious about that one, Ida. Uh, one, three, six to seven. Okay. So like I said, three, good. This is about the spread I was expecting. The majority of you haven't released any yet, which is okay, but you definitely need to release games if you want a chance of breaking into this industry, period. Uh, listen to those words that I just said. You will not get a job without having released games. You might get super lucky and that might happen to one out of 10,000 of you, but for the most part, you have to release games. You have to have published titles to break into this industry. And the reason it's a requirement is because it's so easy, easy for you to do. There's nothing stopping you from gaining experience building games, unlike other industries where you really need special tooling, et cetera, to gain experience. So um, making a portfolio plan. We're about to actually give you a bunch of steps to get those games that you need to build a portfolio. Ultimately, the steps are pretty straightforward. Make the games you need and then make a portfolio. The tools to actually make the portfolio are pretty straightforward as well. I usually recommend Wix. It's not the most beautiful solution in the world, but it's like stupid straightforward. You just drop crap on the page and it's done. Um, but you can also use pure HTML. You can also use GitHub. You can also use itch.io, although to be honest, I have, I see many itch.io portfolios and I never feel like they're that attractive. Um, I, I don't recommend it personally. Um, you can use many other tools, Squarespace, whatever you're most comfortable with. And if you aren't comfortable with anything or you're unsure what to use, Wix is, is tried and true and easy. My top tips for you, most important things that I think are important for your portfolio. Remember that this is a sales page. Kevin was just saying this himself. Um, this is a sales page selling you. Why are you that primo content, <laughs> that primo hire for this company. You should be showcasing released games above all else, anything that is actually on a store. Remember to niche yourself and talk about your specialization and your niche. Focus on games in similar genres to where you want to work. So if you want to work on strategy games, release strategy games. Just like a resume, talk about how you contributed to those games. And don't forget to inject a little bit of personality. During that interview where I got to work for Imbue, they did ask me about Warhammer 40k and it was hilarious and a lot of fun because I had included that in my about me section. My hard rules, the ones that you can't disagree with that I know work single scrollable page recruiters aren't going to click through your website to try to find the content as soon as they have to do that as soon as they have to go looking for the information they need they're going to leave they're not going to look at your portfolio anymore single scrollable page only show off your top three to five games. Hide the others on a different page. So that way, if somebody does want to go learn more, they can, but they are not forced to. Do not make your portfolio playable. I know it sounds cute. <laughs> like you're going to make your portfolio a little video game. Recruiters ain't got time for that shit. They got like 30 seconds for, per candidate. Just make it a nice, clear, attractive, single page portfolio. Include a headshot and a brief bio, a brief bio, a professional headshot. Include contact info and your resume. That's one that I didn't realize, but I've had recruiters ask me for my resume because they couldn't find it on my portfolio. So just include that up there. Remember to update it. 
Um, include links to player games, use GIFs and videos as much as possible rather than pictures, and remove projects that aren't applicable or hide them somewhere else. So a lot of people will put on stuff because they don't feel like they have enough games yet. So they'll include like a GDD they wrote or something like that. Um, and you can have those, especially if you really don't have enough content on your portfolio yet, but they're just going to matter so much less. And honestly, when I see a lot of that kind of stuff, it, it just makes me feel like you probably aren't ready yet. Um, so you can have them, but honestly, I'd probably just hide them under an other projects tab or something like that. All right, whoops. So the seven key steps that I'm gonna kind of walk you through and have you add to your plan at the end of this talk here in the next couple of minutes. Number one, are you feeling confident in your tech stack? Basically the technical tools you need for your profession. Once you're feeling confident or at least like, you know, medium confident, um, it is not a good idea to put my poetry game onto my engineering portfolio, got it. <laughs> it could totally go on there, especially if you don't have enough games yet. Um, but if it is in some way, if it's a, if it's a top notch game, it'll still count. If it's like a really nice por uh, poetry game, totally still put it on there. If it's like, you know, fine. Um, yeah, maybe put it in the more games section or something like that. All right, so those technical skills that you see over and over again on different job postings, that's how you find out what skills you need to learn. Make sure you are feeling at least medium confidence in those. So the first thing, you're just gonna practice some skills. If you aren't already confident in the Unity or the Unreal game engine, get confident in one of those two engines. Have you built two to three practice projects on your own? So if you haven't yet, follow a tutorial and make Flappy Bird or something. Just something where you're starting to feel a little bit more confident. You're like, all right, yeah, I kind of know how games get made. Once you've made a couple of those, move on to release. Release at least itch.io, preferably iOS, Android, Steam. Release two to three small scale games with a team, little tiny game jams, etc. So actually build Flappy Bird with a friend and then put it on uh, the iOS store, something like that. Have you released one to two mid scale games? Small scale to me means one week or less of production. So basically these are game jams. Uh, mid scale to me means two to four weeks. So starting to get a little bit bigger, but still pretty small. And then have you released at least one large scale game? Um, as we all know, the game industry, a large scale game could easily be like four years long. Don't recommend that. That's a long time to wait for your portfolio. But if you build like a one month long or maybe as long as a four or five month long game, that can mean a lot for your portfolio as well. Make sure all these games are top quality primo stuff um, and then build a attractive portfolio website targeted at your specific niche. And then go and get feedback from at least three professionals in your area of expertise on your portfolio. That can mean a lot. Either way I can find opportunities on Kickstarter affordable opportunities. Uh, do you mean like working for different Kickstarters? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure. All right. So where do we actually make games? Um, what I recommend is game jams. Like that is just the sole answer because they're awesome. <laughs> there are game jams all the time, all across the industry. Um, the Global Game Jam and Ludum Dare are two of the most respected. So I recommend you join basically every single one of those that you can. Um, but if you go to itch.io slash jams, and uh, once again, if people post these links for me, that'd be awesome. So I don't have to stop talking, but here's Ludum Dare. Here's Global Game Jam. And there's itch.io, thank you, Ferris. Fer Ferris, Ferris. Um, there we go. So itch.io especially has a massive, and actually I'll go there right now. Itch.io has a massive list of game jams. And one of the things I like is many of them are very long. So look at this GBA micro jam. Probably not a great idea to release something on the Game Boy Advance, which is what I assume that means. Um, but still, it's a longer game jam. It's a real long one. That's what, a full month? Almost two months. Uh, or no, just one month. Yeah. Um, but so that's an example of a longer form jam that you could join and find a couple of buddies to join. When you join these jams, I recommend you don't join them unless they have at least like 50 or so people. So that way there's some community, you can kind of network, ask questions, et cetera. Um, but you can use this page to find so many different jams and it's basically always full of stuff. All right. So let's actually put together a plan for everybody and then we'll have a little bit of time for Q and A. So we're gonna run through this and for each one of these sections, I want you to actually write something down in your uh, portfolio plan. So for every one of these sections, you're going to write something in your portfolio plan. 
First thing I want you to do is right now, go and find three job listings from actual studios that you want to work for. They might be uh, job listings that you don't qualify yet. So maybe it's like a senior engineer position or something like that. But it's really important to actually do your research. It's something that I find at least a, a handful of people just skipping. So you might go to work with Indies. This is a great resource for job postings. You might go to Remote Game Jobs, another great resource. Uh, LinkedIn itself has a lot of job postings. Uh, da, 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 under the job section. Um, Amir Satvat's link. Uh, there we go. Nope, I spelled it wrong. There you go. What? Oh, because I'm on jobs. Not jobs, people. There we go. Amir Safad is like just an amazing dude. And then he uh, manually updates an Excel doc with a bunch of jobs every month. He's an amazing dude. Awesome. Um, oh, okay. I thought that was the link. Let me find his link. Here we go. So he frequently updates this. Here's the actual link though. But you'll see that this doc um, down at the bottom, it's kind of hard to see. But down at the bottom is all the different game categories. So all the different uh, professions. So if I go to game design, looks like he currently has 80 open jobs in game design. Uh, 80 uh, work flexible jobs. So if you're a remote worker. And look at that 500 who require you to go work somewhere else. <laughs> all right, so I gave you a couple of resources to find a job. So your first step is to find three job listings that you want even if they aren't ones that you have enough experience to apply for yet. Find three job listings that you want and then put those links in your, um, in your portfolio plan or at least write down what they are so you can find them later, like if you're writing on paper or something. All right, do that right now. You have like two minutes to do that. Find three jobs that you can learn from and write them down in your portfolio plan. The reason we do this is to try to figure out what is important for us to learn. So if I went to let's go, let's go look at some on LinkedIn. I'm generally a game designer, like I said. So let's see what game design jobs you might find. Here's a lead game designer at Rascal. Definitely the kind of thing I'd be interested in, um, or at least assumedly. Project Wayward. PBE action adventure game. Sea of Thieves, Valheim. Not quite what I'm going to be the best candidate for, but it sounds interesting. So I can copy this, put that on my portfolio doc. The reason this is important is because they will always list what you actually need to know. Shift or maintain a PVE game. All right, I better go do a game jam and do a PVE game. Familiarity with Unreal. All right, I better get good at Unreal. Engine implementation capabilities. Whew, okay, I got to work on game engines. <laughs> That's actually pretty unusual for uh, for a game designer. Blueprints. All right, I'm going to go practice blueprints. They tell you exactly what you need to know. I don't know why this is like <laughs> mind blowing to some people, but it is. So find three jobs, put them in your portfolio plan. Use that for the next step. Step two for your portfolio uh, plan is skill practice. Some of you told me you've already released like seven games. Absolutely, Ollie, thank you. Um, some of you have already released, actually for anybody who is leaving early, uh, one of the things that I'm making available just for the next week is uh, career consultations. So if you want to schedule a call with me one-on-one -on -one for 30 minutes, you can use that link. All right. None of my teams have ever finished. Alec, if none of your teams have ever finished, that's your fault, buddy. I don't mean to be a jerk. <laughs> You're so much more likely to get a game done if you take on the responsibility for putting that team together and then keeping that team together and then keeping them on task. I know that you're probably not a producer, but you kind of got to be the producer to make game jam teams stay together. That is one of the tips I'm going to talk about later, uh, actually in like two slides, because it really is true. Anytime I put together a game jam team, I take on the responsibility. How do you judge a programmer's work? You don't need to judge the programmer's work. If it's functional, they did it. If it's not functional, you find another programmer <laughs> for the next project. You don't need to be a manager. You just need to be like, hey guys, we agreed to meet it this time. Please come. A little bit of project management. All right. So now that you have three games that you can look at, I want you to write down the top three skills that you feel like you need practice in. 
So one of the things I actually did for the InView job is a lot of places mentioned, and so did the job application for InView. A lot of places actually mentioned uh, the, where'd it go? I just had it highlighted. The blueprints, Unreal Blueprints. So I made sure to do a bunch of Unreal Blueprints before um, I applied for that job. Um, so from those job applications that you just found, I want you to now write down in your portfolio plan the top three skills that you need to practice and put them in there. Blueprints, Unreal Engine, animations, Blender, an actual technical skill or a soft skill. Maybe it's management, maybe it's conflict resolution. I don't know. Write that down in your portfolio plan. What are the top three things that you have to work on, your top three skills? Info call. Oh, uh, that is the correct link. Those are the calls that we currently have open. So we'll sort of double duty those calls. Thank you, Kevin. One, how to talk with people. Write down which skills you feel like you need to work on in the chat for me so we can talk about it a little, a little bit. Seaver says, I need to learn how to talk with people. That's a good one. Improving your conversational skills is going to help in interviews and in many other areas. Give me a couple other skills you know you need to work on. Correct link. A couple of the other skills you know needs to work on. I needed, I knew I needed to work on uh, brevity. There's a good one. Nice. Write that down and find yourself a good tutorial on that skill. Go looking around the internet for a good promising tutorial for each of those three skills and put them in your plan. And then write a due date for each tutorial. Can you do all three this week? Maybe, if you really go gung-ho, maybe you do one a week for the next three weeks. Spine Pro, all the other stuff. Hmm, yes, indeed. <laughs> just pick a top three. That'll move you a lot closer if you just get those top three done and start to understand them. And for a lot of these things, once you actually like get rolling, it's so much less scary than you think. When I got ready for Unreal Blueprints, I kept hearing Unreal Blueprints from people and I was like, shit, I have to go learn this thing. If I'm gonna be a game designer, I have to learn Unreal Blueprints. And I was kind of scared of it. And then I started doing it and I was an engineer before this coding, as I said, um, and all Unreal Blueprints is, is visual scripting, which basically means you're just coding, but you're doing it with like little blocks. And I almost instantly was like, uh, almost instantly understood what the hell was going on and didn't need to practice that long. That's not going to be true for all of you because you may not have those applicable skills, but it'll be pretty quick for you to start to pick these up faster than you expect as long as you actually get started. Is uh, blueprinting easier than coding? Good question. Uh, eh? <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's very similar to coding, but I wouldn't really say it's easier because it kind of has its own I mean, it's probably easier. I would say it's probably easier for designers in particular because it is a visual layout instead of a text layout. But they're still kind of comparable, honestly. A little bit of programming, awesome. C Sharp, Unreal Blueprints, great. Yes, good. So you have these written down. Uh, if you haven't already, do this for homework after today. So I, I want us to get us moving. But find yourself a single good looking tutorial on each of those three skills and then give yourself an actual due date for each of those tutorials and then hold yourself accountable to that. There we go. I'm loving that, Drian. Thank you. As an audio person, Drian wants to learn FMOD Studio. That's a big one. Two, Unreal and three, Unity. What you could totally do, Drian, is probably find some practice projects that already exist and then apply your audio, especially with FMOD, inside of Unity and then inside of Unreal. So, you know, go grab some little practice project somebody else made and then make it sound awesome. And that could be your portfolio piece as long as it's uh, as long as you aren't like stealing. All right. Nice. Okay. So your step three on your portfolio plan is a solo project. Uh, it pays to do a couple of these if you do have the time. I promised you that you could build that you could get everything you need to put together a portfolio within two months. So if you're going to stick to that two months, just do one of these. Um, if you're going to do it like as as good and competent as you can, do two to three of these. So this just means finish an entire game playable from start to finish uh, on your own and then upload it to itch.io. So that way it's published. It's probably not going to be your, your sexiest game of all time, but could be pretty good. Um, and regardless, there's a lot less pressure when you're doing it on your own. So that way you can make some of your mistakes. You can get comfortable with various systems on your own time first. So in your portfolio plan, 
I want you to uh, find a game jam that you're feeling good about doing in the next month or two and put that in your calendar. That's going to take less than one week. So ideally, I actually think you should just do a weekend long game jam. Um, but even if you're not going to do that, uh, make it less than a week. Make this game take less than a week. Even if you you can do these without a game jam, I usually recommend you do it with a game jam because you get some accountability and you meet some people, you get some networking in. Um, but you can do this without a game jam. Just if you are going to do it without a game jam, you're going to need to hold yourself entirely accountable. So write down a very specific date, write down exactly what game you're going to make and put that in your portfolio plan. All right, so write down in your portfolio plan the one solo project you're going to do and write down a due date for that solo project. It's the next thing to put in there. One solo project that you can do in less than a week that you can finish, start to finish, and release on itch.io and write it down. If you're aiming to make a full game, plan to release it, scope very small. Yes, uh, there is a tip that I was given a long time ago that anytime you estimate how long something will take you, multiply by four. And that's probably still not long enough. My dear brother, who taught me a lot of what I know about making games, released a game a couple of years ago called Blitzkeep. It was supposed to be a six month project. It took him four years, <laughs> as often how it goes. So for a one week game, this thing's gotta be like Flappy Bird or maybe like a match three game or a little puzzle thing it needs to be teeny, teeny, tiny. That is its own skill, and that is one of the reasons that we recommend doing slightly bigger games at one after the other. So start tiny, get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, because inevitably these are going to take longer than you think, but then you'll get better at estimating how long stuff will take you and at keeping yourself accountable to that small scope. All right, so write down one game you're going to make on your own when it's due, and, uh, and make sure you release it once it's done. Step four, the next thing you're going to put in your portfolio plan is a small scale team project. A small scale team project. So basically the same thing that you just wrote down, but something that you can build with a team. This should once again be a game that is small enough that you can finish in less than a week. So once again, game jams are your friend here. If you do a Ludum Dare, it's going to take you 48 hours to 72 hours, just two to three days to finish a game. Um, many of the game, many of the jams on itch.io are also 48 hours. Find some teammates to do this with. Hey, look, 93 people who might build a game with you right now. Ask around. <laughs> um, and by the way, team members will take some time to find, and some team members are really going to suck. And you're going to slowly over time find people that you work well with. And that's okay. It's another reason to do the step version of these uh, of the scope of your game. If you start with a small game and your programmer sucks and they disappear, it's less of a big deal than if that happened on a big game, right? All right, so a small scale, less than one week team based project. So in your portfolio plan, write when this is going to be due. When is your small scale team based project due? Put that in your portfolio plan right now. Right now. All right, next next thing. Next one is a mid scale, which means two to four weeks in uh, total length uh, game that you build once again with a team. This one is different. Your personal project, you released on itch.io. Your first team based project, you released on itch.io. Your mid scale project, you did two to four weeks in total length. And I want you to submit it to iOS, Android, or Steam. Those are the three that are like recognizable, legitimate stores, but um, are easy-ish to release on. I will say Steam is the hardest of the three, but I hate mobile games now. So, <laughs> you know, whichever floats your boat. This is gonna take more effort, which means you're gonna need to research how to do this. Hopefully because it's team-based, there's somebody on your team who knows how to do this. But one way or another, your next step, step five, is to release a mid-scale project, two to four weeks in length, with a team that you release on iOS, Android, or Steam. Good night, Lazzle. Schedule a call with me if you'd like. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, so put this one on there. When is your due date for your mid scale project? What is the due date for your mid scale project? Put that on your portfolio plan. Now, I didn't include this because I promised that you could build your portfolio in less than two months, but it might be a good idea to do a large scale project after this one. Once you're like, all right, I finished a two to four week game, which by the way, for scale, uh, just to, to give you some reference, something like a Vampire Survivors, you all know that game. 
Dampier C Weavers. This is probably something similar to this, but even simpler than this is is a, a semi realistic game to make in two to four weeks. Something like this, probably with less levels, less features. This is the kind of thing you could make in two to four weeks. Okay, so consider if you really want to be awesome, especially if you're if you have the time, um, do some large scale projects. For me, large scale means anywhere between three and six months in length. Um, I usually don't recommend when you're still in the sort of student and learning stage to do any longer than six months, because um, that's just so such a big period of your life. You know, when you start a project versus when you finish it six months later, your life could be totally different. Maybe you don't even want to work in games anymore. Um, hopefully, all of you do keep the fire alive. Um, but yeah, work on something that's three to six months in length. Um, this is an optional one because it does take three to six months, and that's a lot of time. Um, but it will definitely help you understand the game industry, and it will matter more. Um, as you apply. So my actual step six is now to build your portfolio. So if you did these three steps, a solo project, a small scale team project, and a mid scale team project, you now have three games, which is enough, a minimum amount to build your portfolio site. So add the due date to your portfolio plan now for your actual portfolio. What is the due date to finish a portfolio website? Doesn't need to be perfect, doesn't need to be beautiful, just as long as it's done and functional and includes those three games. What is your due date for that portfolio? Add that to the plan now. If you do this all pretty much back to back, this could be as uh, this could be within the end of the year fairly realistically before the end of 2023. But add a specific due date. Hopefully, as you write these out, you know, the due dates are moving through time. So now you have a nice clear plan on what you need to do. And your final step, add a due date for when you will have three professionals review your portfolio, give you feedback, uh, and then modify your portfolio as a result of that feedback. This is another step that I find a lot of people will skip because uh, you, you just don't really think of it, I guess. Um, but having actual people who have worked in the industry review your portfolio um, will help you make so much better of a portfolio. So once you finish, find a couple of people that you can get feedback from and add a due date for that to your portfolio plan now. All right, somebody tell me what that final due date is. Put it in the chat for me. What is the final due date for a polished version of your portfolio that you've now had three people review? How far into the future do you think this is gonna take you? May, 2024, nice, good. Not bad, that's pretty soon even. Anybody else? Anybody feeling like they can get this done by the end of the year? Yeah, you will almost always find at least one audio person and at least one artist. It can be hard to find um, engineers sometimes, but you'll find them. Um, join other communities. I'm gonna give you the link to the IGA server in a second, um, should you wish to come join. March 2024, January 2024, January 2077. Interesting. <laughs> See you then, Xenoc. Um, January 2024. Probably November, December. Awesome. Um, so a couple people here tomorrow says regular beetle. Uh, either regular beetle already has a bunch of games they've already made, which is good. <laughs> or um, yeah, I don't know. They're they're very ambitious. Uh, I have made games in one hour before, but that's still a bit of a <laughs> challenge. Um, a couple of people here have mentioned probably by this date or ideally by this date. Don't do that to yourself. You're so much less likely to finish. If you if you do that, if you're like, eh, I think I'll probably do it by then, that just means you're not going to do it by then and then you'll feel kind of bad by then. So have a specific date for every single one of these seven steps and then stick to it as best you can. You've got 90 people in this room right now who can help hold you accountable to that. Okay. Step eight, profit. Well done. <laughs> All right. So that is the end of the actual lecture portion. I am I don't have anything else to talk about. So first things first, let's remember our second rule. And that is to celebrate. So everybody pump the air for me a little bit. Leave me some emojis. You've done it. You've reached the end. Wow. Amazing. Yippee, says Chase. <laughs> so proud of all of you for hanging out and giving portfolios an hour and a half of your time. Um, as a gift for getting here to the end, I'm going to give you two things. Number one, if you wish, you can come join the Indie Game Academy Discord. We are focused on uh, helping people pave their own path. So that is one potential place for you to find um other people to work with so go ahead and join our discord if you wish and the second thing i'll give you is the one i linked already i have this 
uh, info session call. Um, it is meant for talking about our programs, which is why it mentions the price on there. But this is something that we can also use for one-on-one -on -one career consultations. So if you just want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, what do you think of my portfolio? How can I break in? I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z. Let's chat one-on-one. -on -one. I have a personal goal of helping 10,000 people make games, and I'm getting there. I'm almost at 3,000 now. So every one of you who schedules a call is actually helping me out. Okay, let's cool down. Anytime I finished one of these, I really like to uh, to like discuss a little bit. So what is one of your favorite lessons from today? Absolutely, stunts nerd. Heck yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I do my best. What is one of your favorite lessons from today? Leave it in the chat for me. Or one of your favorite takeaways. You may also ask questions. Yes, this is kind of Q&A time. What is your favorite, one of your favorite lessons or takeaways from today? Finished projects greater than anything else. Yes, titles, released titles. You'll notice when you submit a talk to GDC, it doesn't say anything else under the speaker section except titles. They wanna know what you actually released. The LinkedIn referral, awesome, yeah. That is, uh, once again, something I didn't realize was like valuable information, but finding those connections can really help on LinkedIn. Definitely the do's and do nots for the portfolio, great. Tips and links used a lot. Good. Directly contact people who work at those companies. Yes, remember that I am usually not directly contacting them. Instead, I am contacting somebody I actually know and have a pre-existing relationship with, and I'm asking them to hook me up with somebody who works there. Because uh, psychologically, if I have a buddy, let's call him Bob, and Bob comes to me and says, yo, I have this other person named Sarah, and she's amazing. Psychologically, I think I feel like I know Sarah already because I trust Bob so much. So finding that middle ground is really the biggest takeaway for this. Finding that person who knows somebody there. All right, learning to market yourself by sucking it up. Yes, focus on that portfolio website, make it sleek, make it spiffy. If you get a job uh, as a result of this talk, let me know and I'll celebrate you and freak out. All right, what is something that you're gonna do differently moving forward? What's something that you're gonna change about your approach to breaking into this industry as a result of this talk? Be accountable. Hell yeah, Isa. One other thing that I can recommend is to create accountability groups. Um, it helps a lot. Something that I used to do back in the day before I really had a strong community is I would find a couple of people that I really liked, usually no more than five, just like two, three, maybe as many as five people. And we would schedule a regular call every two weeks is the cadence that I tended to really like, where we would talk about our goals, we would set some goals for next time, and then the next two weeks we talk about those goals from last time. And that was it. So if there's some people in this community that you like or over in the Indie Game Academy community, uh, schedule an accountability call, a regular recurring accountability call. All right, I didn't know I needed to niche before. Yeah, it's like a little bit unfortunate and you don't need you don't need need to niche, but it definitely helps. We have found that it helps, and so I recommend it. More programming to make my own games rather than just 3D renders. Yes, fully finished games matter more than anything else. Uh, Jess is, doesn't have a portfolio, which is just a shame. I'm ashamed in you, Jess. Just kidding. <laughs> Jess is our community manager over at the Indie Game Academy Discord. If you like the Discord, um, it's her fault. So compliment her and tell her she's great because she is. Uh, she actually is also a national champion at freaking uh, Big Buck Hunter. <laughs> I don't know how or why, but she is. All right. Anything else you might do differently moving forward? Still got to learn how to balance two jobs. Yeah, it's it's so much. I work a full time job and then I also run IGA and man, it can be absolutely exhausting and I get that. However you can, though, find that time to fit this into your life. If you're really serious about breaking in, it's just what it takes. All right, so uh, it is now Q&A time. Who has questions? I'm gonna hang out for probably the next 10 or so minutes to answer some questions. I'll be here until nine. So um, for anyone who wants to hang out and listen to questions, I'll be here for the next 20 minutes. What questions do we have about portfolios? Can you review my portfolio? Sure. <laughs> All right, Luke, let's do it. Yeah, you can also, I guess, share your portfolio. If you have questions, I'll also answer questions. Um, I think I'll just drop the recording just in the general chat and I'll ping IGA people again. So you can uh, get the uh, IGA role. Jess, how do they get the IGA role? We're, we've become partners with um, 
with work with Indies because we just love y'all and we love teaching classes to y'all. So there's actually an IGA role inside of your community. I don't know how to actually get it, Jess, if you could tell us, that'd be great. Um, but if you get that link, I'll ping that link um, when it happens. All right, Luke Pearson, portfolio review. I'm gonna answer some questions as well as we go. Uh, so, first of all, this actually looks pretty good. Um, I think this is decent. I like that you have technical designer right here across the top of the screen. I would include contact info. Looks like you have some of it down at the bottom here, but I would include it up here as well. It's pretty typical for it to be towards the top. Um, I would also have a headshot. Like I said, I tend to really like that and a very, very brief bio that sort of talks about you. Um, at the bottom as well, I like to include an about me section that tells more about you and make it non-work related. Just talk about you and some of your cares and uh, what you love. Um, I feel like I, I really love the layout, but I do feel like these could be animated if possible. So I can see shit actually happening on the screen. Uh, where does this bring me? All right, this is decent. This is a, whoa, okay, this is nice. <laughs> this is great. I love how much work you put into this and how much you are being thoughtful and talking and explaining what's going on. I love the gifts and stuff. But once again, remember that you should optimize this to be a single page. Um, it's unlikely that recruiters are gonna click through this because they just have so many things to review. And if they do click through this, they're not gonna read all of this. So I would have, some of this info right here, including links to play and some of the most important points, how you contributed, et cetera. Um, and then I would have a button that says learn more that goes to this page. And this page is super strong. This is awesome. Um, this is like, well done, Luke. But it's just probably people aren't going to click through this. Recruiters in particular aren't going to click through this. So that's my, my top tips. Get a headshot in there and a little bit about you up here, possibly your contact info up here. Include a, a bigger about me at the bottom. Um, include more basic info on the home page. Think about this as a single scrollable page and turn these into learn more buttons instead of the whole thing. Okay. I saw some other questions towards the top. I want to make sure I'm answering questions. All right. Uh, Iranoli, Iranoli asks, I'm a student and I feel a bit overwhelmed by how much I need in so little time. Yes, I've only completed two mid-sized games with a team and two finished games alone. How much do you suggest we need to get an internship as a game developer? Is it the same as a regular job in this industry? So yeah, this is a difficult one. Um, it is, the, the answer is as much as you can. Um, I don't want to stress or scare anybody out and I get why it's stressful and scary. Um, it is not a great time for the game industry right this second. It will come back, but at least right now, and probably at least for the next year, it's going to be a bit crap. Um, so I get why you're stressed, but, uh, as much as you can put together between now and then is good. And in fact, you having two finished mid-sized games and two solo projects is a great start for where you're at. Um, I would start building that portfolio and, and make it look good right now with those games and start applying for internships right now, even though you're at. Uh, even though you're in school, um, start doing it right now um, and continue working on a side project if you can. So I would say to get an internship, you still want a minimum three finished projects, a minimum three finished games. Access to the slideshow. Yeah, I will definitely share that. I can share that right now, actually. That's easy. There you go. Uh, I guess here, let me put the links in here in case people want to join. All right. There's that. And then my Calendly. There's that. And then here's the link. I'll put that in the chat. It, where the hell's the chat? <laughs> I've lost the event. Here we go. Wow, that really took a while. Didn't like loading that. All right, there's the link to the slideshow. And I'll also drop that um, in the Discord when I drop the recording in. OK. Other questions? And we'll review one or two more portfolios as well. 
All right, here it is. What kind of small games are impressive? That's a really good question. Um, I don't think there is a particular uh, small game that's going to be impressive. I think the two most important notes are one, make sure it's a game that is going to work well for where you're trying to work. So once again, if you want to work on uh, at Firaxis on a on civilization, then make a Civ game, a 5x game. Um, if you want to work at, on uh, Call of Duty or Battlefield or something, make a shooting game. Um, I do think that really the top, the top, the uh, excuse me, the bottom line is that it's high quality. So whatever you're going to put together, just make sure it's awesome. It can be Flappy Bird or something simple, as long as it's like freaking nice Flappy Bird. All right. Any advice for building a portfolio for marketing or community management? Yeah, great question. Um, I would say, uh, remember that all of this is a showcase. So what you're going to need to do is to work on communities and do marketing on, on actual projects, on titles, on games, and then talk about your successes there. So you could still join game jams in that case, but act as their marketer or their community manager. Hey, I'm going to build y'all a discord this weekend, and I'm going to bring in a hundred people. And then you can use that as a stat. Um, it's going to be better for you on longer form projects since marketing is actually going to matter. Um, but once again, it's just release titles and how you contributed to those release titles. All right. Um, I would make marketing assets and community assets. Um, uh, Jess, when Jess got hired here at the Indie Game Academy, one of the things she was able to tell me is that she created a uh, community of people who did improv in New York City. And she told me about all the events she did for them and some of the ways she kept them sort of around and kept them engaged. And that was enough for me to go, okay, she knows what she's talking about. All right. I'm going to do maybe one more here. So coder command. Released one here. All right. Here is Ryan Arthur Rutherford. Wow. Damn. What a cool name. Do you own a yacht? I feel like you must. <laughs> Software developer and Unreal Engine 5. C++ programmer based in the UK. This feels a little long. It's a, it's a very small note, but that's like a bit of a tongue twister that a recruiter might not immediately pick up. This is very mean. And once again, I tend to be an extremely positive person, but like act like the recruiters are dumb. <laughs> they're not, but they're going to be scanning very quickly and just trying to move through quickly. So you really want to like make it nice and snappy and clear and obvious. Um, about me I like this. I like that you talk about your experience level. You're using actual metrics. Uh, I like that you're bringing up different things you've worked on. Definitely like the uh, programming languages that you know. Netcode for multiplayer, that's great. I'm seeing some specialization here, which is great. All games and projects. Um, this is pretty good. Yeah, this is interesting. So you're 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 spending a lot of of website space to do an about me, and and this is not bad. But then the actual website space where you're talking about the games is so small, and that's partly because of this different design mindset that I've been advocating for. Uh, like once again, this is a lot of really great information, similar to Luke's, um, and this is good. I like this, but probably this should be a learn more button. And you should instead include some of the most important points just on the home page. You really want it to be a scrollable page. You want the recruiter to be able to go, whoop, oh, that looks cool. Great. He knows what he's doing. So those are my main notes. I like this a lot too. Um, the recruiter is not going to care about this, but the bots might. There are bots that will look at your portfolio and they might go looking for Visual Studio Code or whatever. So I think biggest note here is you might shorten this a bit. I like this, I think. But it's a bit, it takes up a bit of, of space and the games are beneath the fold, remember? Um, and then I would just devote more of your homepage to the games themselves. That's the biggest note. All right, I'm going to do power hour, one minute per page. Here we go. Let's see if I can get through just everybody's. <laughs> All right, this is, who's that? You sack of wine. Amazing. I don't know your name. Oh, it's over here. Yeah, that's all right. That's fine. <laughs> um, I nice 3D environment artist and storyteller. Nice. Okay. Um, storyteller. I get why you put that there because it makes us feel good. I, as a recruiter, have no idea what that means. Are you narrative? I don't know. So I might make that more clear. Oh fuck yeah, Nausicaa Valley of the Wind. Absolutely. Oh my, that looks so good. Oh yes, I love this actually. Um, cause if somebody is a, has a, a fandom for Nausicaa, they're going to care about this. All right. Same thing as what I've been saying to other people, 
I think you could devote a little bit more uh, uh, page space to each of these games individually. We've seen some professional examples that don't do that. Um, so for instance, Nathan's here, you know, he worked on Diablo 4, he's got plenty of experience and his portfolio, frankly, is kind of ugly. I would think this is a bad portfolio, but hey, he got hired. So remember, I'm only one person, I can be wrong. Um, but at least from my experience, uh, I feel like these could just have more about them here and then I can click to learn more to get into the page. All right, this is pretty decent though. I definitely feel like you know what you're doing, which is the most important thing. All right, who's next? Socket. Socket is also, oh, this is an art station. That's why, great. Um, Socket is a concept artist slash illustrator. You could probably niche yourself even a little bit more, Alex. Um, you could talk about the kinds of things you like to work on. It's clear you have a pretty particular style. So you could say 2D concept artist that specializes in, let's say like avant-garde, bizarre, uh character styles or something like that um definitely like oh yeah i love this i love that you are talking about some of your decisions people want to know that you are actually thinking through your decisions and not just doing whatever so i love that you were actually giving info in that one um i feel like you could give more context in general um so tell me more about the decisions that are made here uh oh yeah this is super strong love this um, this is, by the way, ArtStation is, is, is particular, but this, by the way, is part of the reason I talk about just having your top three to five games. Because um, if I clicked into, what was that other one I did? If I clicked into this, I would kind of know you're good at sketching, but if I clicked into this, I, I actually know that I can trust you and that you have some ability. Um, this is what you want people to click on. So somehow making this more enticing and making it so that people are gonna click on this first is gonna help you out. All right, what do we got next? Jahim. Jahim also on ArtStation, 3D environmental artist. Um, I want to see more work. This is not quite enough yet. I want to see some of it used in game. So if there are any released games that you've worked on, I want to see them in there. Um, this one is pretty strong, but I can definitely tell that you know, you're still getting your feet underneath you. So I would love to see more work, especially uh, work from games that are actually released. Um, but this is a good start, good solid start. I can tell that you can model stuff. All right. Any others? Knight. How many more do we have? Can I get through all of them very quickly like this? On Ho, I would love a headshot. I'm always a fan of headshots. On Ho is a concept artist and illustrator. Um, these are, oh yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I can tell that you have uh, ability, talent. I love that you are giving me some of the information and also some of the like, um, some keywords. So once again, I'm seeing your process. That's a big part of what's going to attract recruiters, seeing the actual process. Uh, and that's pretty cool too. Tube of lipstick that kills vampires. Um, I feel like you could give me more information about these. Tell me about the games themselves, link me to play them, give me some of your thought process. Um, and I'm not always an advocate for a single scrollable page rather than having to click through, as I've said a couple times now, but this is pretty decent. I can tell you're a strong 2D uh, illustrator. Eaglesoft LTD. All right, main thing, who the hell is Eaglesoft LTD? I don't know this person. Uh, somebody made this point earlier. Uh, I want to know who you are. This is your company website. This is not your portfolio. This should be a portfolio for Anthony K. I definitely need your name at the top. Um, I like having your face right here. You could even punch in, like have it just be like this part of the screen so I know it's you and I'm not like, what is this? What is this random tap at the top of the screen? Um, Eaglesoft LTD. Once again, this is cute, but once again, this is your company and not you. I need to know about you. Um, some of the games you've worked on. Nice, that looks really attractive. I would give it a separate section with some more information about what you actually did on the project. Same thing here. And in general, I feel like you could organize this a little bit better. Um, there's like a lot here, but it's almost like too much. The three to five game concept again, maybe I would hide this on some of the other pages 
like a more section or, you know, you could put all your cool stuff, all your retro stuff under the retro tab, but not have it on the home page. Um, this definitely feels like more of a company website um, and less of a personal website. I would just have a separate site, keep this one and then make a separate portfolio website. All right, what else we got? Rosios. Nice. All right. Um, Mikai, uh, I am a fan of also actual headshots. I know that ArtStation is a bit special. Um, somebody who's, who's an actual animator might say something different than me on this one. Uh, but I feel like if you can, I would build a portfolio not on ArtStation. I know it's convenient, but you have no control over how the page is laid out. Um, and it's kind of two separate purposes. Uh, but this is a good start. I can tell that you are, um, that you're still practicing. Um, you know, this one looks a heck of a lot better than this one. Um, and that's one of the reasons to have a separate website that is not ArtStation, because then you can just show off those best one and maybe ArtStation is for everything. Um, but how do I get back to the homepage? I don't even know. I don't use ArtStation enough. There we go. Um, but this is a decent start. I would say, once again, I want to see some actual games that you've worked on. That's a big one for sure. All right, we are at 857, which means I'm going to stop there. Oh, man, we've got two more. Okay, I'm going to power through. <laughs> Here we go. So we've got Grandma Green, Rachel Yu. This is an example of something that could have been on ArtStation, but instead is their own separate website, which is good. I think that's good. Um, I, this is interesting. Oh, okay, cute. Yeah, so I think, um, I kind of like, I think we can learn from Rachel here. I kind of like that they have links to all of these projects over here. So this is kind of like our more section. This is where we can learn more about some of their various works. Um, I do think that if this is a game portfolio for getting game companies, you got to make sure that the actual released games are the ones that you have here on the home page, which they might be. I'm not exactly sure. It looks like they are. Um, I would, as I've said a couple of times, think of this as a single scrollable page instead of something I have to click through. So I would include some info about each of these and then allow them to click through. Um, the info you have looks pretty good. Uh, this banner, that's like spicy. I like that. It looks great. Um, I'm going after the nice actual game trailer is great. You could definitely include more about what you actually did. You could have some sketches, uh, show some of your process. Tell me a little bit about how you actually contributed and your thought process. Pretty solid though. Well done. I could also see more games being on there. Um, this is now Alec Webb, 2D artist and animator. Nice. Alec, I can tell that you've been doing this for a long time and you have a lot of experience. That's great. Um, once again, I don't know, I, I sort of, I might be wrong about this because I am not an animator and um, I often am not the person hiring animators. Um, but I once again feel like ArtStation is just not the best for an actual portfolio because I don't know what games you've worked on. And so I don't know if you've been through the project. I can clearly tell that you're a strong animator, but like I'm gonna want somebody who can work in Unity or Unreal and can contribute to actual animations in game and stuff like that. Um, so I might, build a different portfolio than this and maybe link to this for sort of more stuff. Regardless, I can clearly tell that you're a very strong animator um, and that you have a very distinctive style, very strong distinctive style. If it was the kind of style that would fit my game, you'd be top of my stack for who to hire. Um, I like that you're showcasing some of your other abilities. So you are showing that you have some depth, um, but it's also clear that you have niched yourself and that you have this particular style that you're really awesome at. All right, is this the last one? This is the last one, perfect. <laughs> I need an award for this. All right, finally we have Calvin, tons of, uh, of art people. Should have brought some more art portfolios. All right, Calvin is a 3D environment slash prop artist. Um, loving that I know exactly what games you have worked on here. Um, as always, single scrollable page, I think in general is better. This is not bad. Um, love that you have so many different pictures. You're really showcasing what you worked on. You're giving me a great glimpse into what you focused on as well. This dude knows how to focus on minute detail. He can build me some sexy fences and some freaking cool bricks. <laughs> um, I, if anything else, I might include some more about your actual thought processes. So you can include on a couple of these pictures, like, uh, you know, I decided to do X because Y. Um, 
here you can see that I added uh, a little bit of mold to the grout lines to make the world feel a little bit older and more run down. Anything like that is going to show that you have real thoughts that you contribute to the game. Um, this is pretty strong, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this lets me know that you know what you're doing. Stop him! And it showcases some of the games you've been working on. I just randomly started playing again. Um, so I would say, Calvin, this is very strong. I might include a headshot at the top of the page. That's something you could easily add. Um, I might include, you'd have your about section, what does this do? Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, this is great. Calvin, this is awesome. This is one of the better ones we saw tonight. It's not a single scrollable page, but um, it still showcases what you're good at uh, and what you're capable of doing in a way that I think is gonna work for most recruiters. All right, so that is the end of the talk. Um, I am, uh, we have, uh, let's see. So to remind everybody, should you wish it, we'd love to have you in our Discord. Here's the link. And should you wish it, we can do a one-on-one -on -one conversation, a one-on-one -on -one call, about 30 minutes, me and you. Um, we have coming up, uh, week after next, our level three program. Like to gain more experience in concept art. Wondering if there's an opportunity for this on Global Game Jam. Yes, absolutely. Concept artists are super valuable in game. Either you are putting together the concept art or you're actually creating assets. Um, join a team, tell them what you do, ask what they need. Um, so we have our level three program, which is our biggest program coming up week after next. It's a three month long, uh, excuse me, it's been changed. It's now four months long. A four month long guided program where we get sorted into an indie game team of multidisciplinary talent. So you'll have an engineer, you'll have an artist, you'll have a project manager, depends a bit on who joins. Um, and then those people are gonna work together to come up with an original game concept under the guidance of seven industry professionals from a bunch of really cool places, including Blizzard, Wizards of the Coast, uh, Mojang, freaking Minecraft, and a bunch of other places. They will guide you in releasing this game to a store of your choice. Um, the uh, program starts week after next. So what I'm gonna do is if you wanna hear about that, if you're curious about the program, I'm gonna talk about it for about 10 minutes and give you, I think this is it. Yeah, show you kind of the info deck on the program in case you would like to apply. Um, if it's not for you, uh, Coder Command is asking how much the program is. So the ticket price, the highest price you can pay is $3,400, but it goes down from there. There are scholarships and payment plans and discounts um, that you can get. Uh, the program goes as low as 600 bucks for a four month long program with six hours of content of live classes, online classes like this one every single week with some of the coolest people in the world. Uh, here is the professor list. We got Victor Blanc from Mojang. We have Karina Diaz from Mighty Yell, Athena Peters from Rainbow Unicorn, Tony Sharma from Wizards of the Coast, Nikki Silber from Telltale Games, Justin Williams from Blizzard, and Mathail from Paradox. So I'm gonna spend about 10 minutes talking about this. If you're interested, if you're curious, stick around. Um, if you are uh, done to go, totally cool. Thank you so much for hanging out. Hope to see you in our Discord and back here and work with Indies. I'm going to share the recording from this a little bit later. And actually, I'm going to stop recording now. Thank you, recording. Goodbye. <laughs>